Hey guys, the Cubed here, and today I have a walkthrough solve of the Ghost Cube. So in this video, I will be helping out anybody who needs help solving a Ghost Cube. I'll go over how I solve it. I actually speed solve it, sort of. I time myself. My PB is 154.10, I believe. And uh, I got that on video in my 8K contest results video. So I absolutely love Ghost Cubes, and a lot of people out there think it's really difficult, when really it's not at all. Uh, but first, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys, uh, for you guys that don't know, what a ghost cube is. It is a 3x3 shape mod. However, you have to misalign the layers to get it to be fully functional. So here's one layer, here's the second, here's the third, and then there's that way. Uh, you can turn it that way, too. So, I'm going to go. I'm gonna scramble it, and then I will just go over how I solve it every single time. Okay, so here is the scrambled ghost cube. Yours might have stickers. You can completely ignore the stickers because you don't need them, it's just solved by shape. So what I do first is, uh, first you gotta know where the centers are. Here is the center, here's the center, 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 center. And you'll notice two of the centers have three sides. This one, as you can see, only has two. It has that and then that. Uh, this one has three. One, two, and then that little triangle right there. And across from the one with three, there is the other one. And this is the one that I start with because it has three sides, but uh, you can look at you can see the difference between this one and this one. This one's more like symmetrical, I guess, like just that, that, and that little triangle. This has like three different shaped, not even triangles. So I always I always start with this center, and what I do first is I look for this type of piece. So this piece. There's two of them. There's a long one and a short one. They just happen to be next to each other here. This one is the shorter one. This one is the longer one. The longer one is the one that goes on this, on this center. So I'll line up the longer one. Then there are two other similar pieces, the flat ones, completely flat. Let me just put those next to each other so I can show you. Actually, here they are both. And there is a longer one and a smaller one. The smaller one is the one that you want, and that goes directly across from the edge that you just put in. So, it's right here in the back. What you do is, you line it up like that. For you, it might accidentally get lined up like that. It's okay, just flip it, and then you have two pieces of the cross. Then, these next two pieces, they're uh, very distinct. They look just like the edge pieces. For the second layer, which you guys probably don't know yet if you don't if you haven't solved it yet, but here's one of them. It's flat on the whole entire thing except for a big triangle. A big triangle, you'll see what I mean in a second. That one goes on this side, the one that has the bigger uh, spot. So I'm going to put that right there. And then the last cross edge is exactly like that except for it has a tiny triangle. And that one is, where is it? It's right here. It's completely flat, except there is that little triangle right there, as you can see, right there. So that is the last edge, and I will go ahead and put that in, like so. No, I actually put it in the wrong way. OK, so there we have the cross, as you guys can see. Next, we move on to the corners. There are four corners that have three sides. One of them has a big triangle. None of them are small, like this one. There are three others that are like this, or two others. You want to look for the one that has the big triangle. Put that on the bottom layer. And then that one I know needs to go in this location. There's, uh, you guys can tell, these two spots will have these bigger corners. The other ones will just have the triangles. Uh, but on the left one is where this big corner goes. I know it faces in that direction. So if you want to like pause the video and then go ahead and put it in like that, you can. Then this next one, the next big corner, is the smallest of the corners that have three of them. So uh, this one I kind of eyeball, and I can already tell this is the smaller one. If you look at them all side by side, you can tell that's smaller than that, and that is indeed smaller than that. So, let me go ahead and put that in. So there's that. Then, these two are going to be triangles. As you can see, this is actually perfect. There's one of the triangles, another, another, and then the fourth. 
So this one on the left is the one that looks the most oddly shaped, and it's this one. As you can see, the other ones are kind of uh, isosceles, I guess, but this one is not. It's a little slanted more. So that one is the one that goes right there. Then this one, you have to do another eyeball. You have to pick from the remaining two that does not have the sticker, or if your sticker has been removed, look for the triangle that does not have the little triangle on the top right there. So I'm going to have to look at that one, and then that one. Again, this is the cross side. Um, just eyeballing it, this is the smaller one. You guys will have to see that for yourself, but <clears throat> I put that one in, and then there is the first layer. Now what I do is I align all these centers, and uh, how I do this is I always start with the centers that are mostly flat. There's this one and then the one across from it, and they're both different. This one has a little triangle on the right, the other one has a little triangle on the left. And what I do first is I find the side that looks like this. There's a, a very distinct line there, and I know that one of the flat ones will go right here. And I know that the little triangle will be on this side. So this happens to be the right one. If you turn this center clockwise, that little triangle will be right there. So what I do is I have to turn it once clockwise. So I'll move these three out of the way by putting them to the top out of the way. Move it once clockwise. Move those pieces back and then move those back. And then I align it like that. So that edge has been aligned, or that center has been aligned. Then uh, this one, the, the smaller triangle, or the smaller side, is the one that will be facing this. You just kind of have to know this, I guess, after practicing so much, I kind of have it all memorized. So this one has to move once counterclockwise. So I'll move these three pieces out of the way, move it once counterclockwise, put them back, and there you go. We now have two centers that have been aligned. This one, you want the flat side to be that way, so it has to turn once clockwise. Move these out of the way, once clockwise, move it back. And I always align, or when I was practicing, I, I would usually align it after each one. So that, that way it's easier to actually tell how or which way they have to be turned. This way has to be once clockwise because it has to have. So this kind of, it's kind of slanted down, and you want that one to be in the middle, the slant down in the middle, or the slanted corner in the middle. So turn it once clockwise. And there you go, you have all these centers aligned. Next, you're going to be paying attention to all the edges that have a triangle, a yeah, big triangle. <clears throat> you don't want the flat ones such as this or that. You don't want that edge and you do not want that other flat edge. So I have to misalign the layers again so I can make it fully functional. And I'm going to look for a piece with a triangle and uh, I'm going to do this the old-fashioned way, the, the pogo bat way. Uh, I know that the triangles are uh, aligned with this side and the pieces are uh, the edges, sorry, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but I really want you guys to be able to solve it. The edges that have a triangle and also a small triangle, those ones go in the they go in the direction of the smaller triangle. So this one, uh, this triangle is on this side. So uh, this would either have to go right or left. Like I'm lining, this is lined up, kind of like these two, I guess. So this has to go to the right, maybe. So what I would do is I would turn it to the right and see if that lined up, and it did not. And the reason I know it won't line up to the left is because the small triangle, uh, these edges would never go to the side that doesn't have the small triangle. So I'll line the triangle piece up, and does it have to go to the right or left? The right has the small triangle, so move it to the right and as you can see it lines up with that so I'll do the algorithm to put that there and then there is one edge then let's go ahead and do one of the triangle pieces with only one triangle again the triangles line up with this with this side 
So uh, does it have to go to the right or left? It can't go to the right, but even if this was not here, it still would not be able to because of that. So this might have to go to the left. In this case, it does. So I'll move that to the left. Here we have another good example. Uh, on this side, the triangle is on the top. The, when I say the triangle, I mean the big one. So I'm going to line it up not with the flat centers. And since I know it has to go toward the smaller triangle, I'm going to put it on this side and see if it lines up. Indeed it does. So I'll put it over to the left. Then we have the last one. We have the triangle. Line up the triangle with the flat side. And it's the last edge, so it has to go to the left. There we have two layers of the ghost cube. So moving on to the third, you have to know which ones should be facing a certain direction and which one shouldn't. In this case, I know that the edge with the sticker, uh, you, in, or, you have <clears throat> in order to read it, you have to turn it clockwise <coughs> or counterclockwise. So I know this is the correct position for this edge. So this is this is as if you. I'm just focusing on the corners or the edges right now. Sorry. This is a correctly placed edge. Then I know that this one, it happens to be in the right spot, but the taller side will be up, if that makes any sense. So these two are the ones that are correct. Since you can only have none, two, or four that are correct, this and this are correct. And I know that this one's not correct because this triangle part should be, this should be flipped because this point has to meet with that point. So these are the two that are correct, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the top left corner and do whatever I need to do to get the cross, top cross. Now I have the top cross, and right now it happens to be in the right position, but let me just get it so it's not. Now this you sort of have to memorize what edges need to be placed where. I know that with this edge here, I know that this long piece would have to be here. I know that these two are opposites, first of all, so uh, these two aren't the ones that are correct. Uh, both of them aren't correct. One of them might be. But then I know this one has to be here, and then to the right of that has to be this, and then to the right of that would have to be this one. So here we have two that are correct. So I'll put one on the right, one on the back, and I'll do soon to line them all up. So then here is the top cross, and then what I'll be doing is I'll be move I'll move the edges around, and as, as you can see, these two are the ones that involve the triangles. This one happens to be correctly placed, so I'll move the corners around. They're not in the correct position yet. So I'll do it once more, and I always do this until I have this corner to work off of because this is the one that I'm 100% sure goes here and also this one. These two I don't know yet, so this one was in the correct spot uh, to start out with. I would not know and I would do whatever I could to get this corner here or this corner here so that I could then do that algorithm from that position. So now I'll just do R prime D prime R D until it is solved. And I'll go over some things that can go wrong and that have gone wrong during some good solves. Okay, so hopefully that helped. If it didn't, I'm sorry, you can go back and rewatch it. I tried to explain it as best as I could. But one problem you might have is uh, the whole cube will be solved except for these two corners will not, they're not in the right positions. And that will happen when this corner is accidentally switched with this corner. These corners are very similar. This one's slightly bigger, uh, but just by eyeballing it, I could tell this is smaller, but when I'm speed solving it, I might accidentally and uh, accidentally put that corner there. And uh, so I'll have to go back, put the, I'll have to switch the corners, and then do that all over again. So that's one thing that can go wrong. And then the, the worst part about solving it is the last few turns, because you have to like do that to land, to land it up and then uh, that can take a few seconds. Anyways, there is the walkthrough solve of the ghost cube. And I hope it helped. 
I really do. If it didn't, uh, feel free to message me. I really would like it if all of you guys out there could actually solve this because it's a very fun puzzle. And also, post your PBs if you guys happen to do time it. And also, which ghost cube do you guys have? If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. This video's letters are GC. I hope you all enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.